second graders and welcome back to our changing landforms unit. Today we are going to be focusing on chapter three, lesson two, which is investigating differences in scale. Okay, so in the last lesson, we looked at a couple of different maps. Geologists use maps to study landforms and the big changes that can happen to them. As geologists, we'll create maps to help us figure out how small pieces of rock eroding from a landform can cause a big change. So today we're going to investigate the following question, which is if erosion moves small pieces of rock, how can it cause a big change? So since we cannot bring a real landform into the classroom or into our homes, um, we're going to use this mountain model to investigate how big changes happen to landforms. And so we're gonna be using something similar. They're using pom-poms in that picture, but we're gonna use cotton balls when we do get to the mountain model part of our activity. So in your packet, you have this worksheet, which is called Mapping the Mountain. So we'll each draw a map of the mountain in our packets. The map will show areas of very, very, very high land, areas of high land, and then areas of a lower land. So the directions for our worksheet, um, first we're going to work on making a key for our mountain map at the bottom of the page, which is located down here where it says map key. Um, we're gonna be using brown to show very high land. We're gonna be using yellow for high land, and then we're gonna be showing using green to show low land. After we color in our key, we're going to look very carefully at the picture of the mountain, and we're gonna visualize what it might look like from above or from a bird's eye view. Then we're gonna think about which parts of the land are very high, which parts of the land are high, and then which parts of the land are low. And then in the box below right here, we're gonna draw a map that shows what the mountain will look like from above. So remember that a map shows the view from above. Again, so it's giving us that bird's eye view. So picture being a bird flying above the mountain that is to the left, our mountain model. Visualize the shape of the mountain from above. So go ahead and just take a second to really look at that picture and visualize yourself flying above it and then thinking about what might it look like from above. You'll also notice that in the picture of the mountain model, there is tape around the edges. So the tape around the mountain shows the area that we will map. The corners of the tape rectangle match up with the corners of the map area on our notebook page. So this tape over here is kind of what we are gonna be using as these parts of our rectangle in our mountain map. So I'm gonna have you guys go ahead and pause the video and without doing anything on your worksheet yet, I just want you to point to the different parts of the mountain. So I want you to point to a very high part of land. I want you to point to a part of high land and I want you to point to an area of low land. So go ahead and just pause the video and point to each of those areas on your screen. So if I were looking at this, I would say that areas of very high land would probably be like the very tip top of our mountain. When we're thinking about areas of highland, I'm thinking about this middle section that's definitely raised up still, um, but not quite as tall as the very tip. And then areas of lowland, I'm thinking about like the very bottom, that area of purple um, underneath our mountain would be a low area of land. So what I'm gonna have you guys do is you can pause this video and then on your worksheet, you are going to color in the map key the same as this. So we're gonna be using brown to show very high land, yellow to show high land, and then green to show low land. Okay, now that you guys have colored in your map key, you guys are actually going to create a map of the mountain on your page. And remember that we saw some maps um, last lesson and we remember that a map is different from just a photograph, right? So our map is not gonna focus so much on showing the shape of a mountain, but it's gonna focus more on using those colors on our map key to show where the high land is, where the lower land is, where the high, very high parts of land are. So go ahead and pause this video and take a second to work on drawing your map in your worksheet, and then we will come back and talk about our second activity. 
guys. So we are working on activity two in lesson two of chapter three, which is gonna be actually looking at our mountain model. So ours looks a little bit different from the pictures. Um, so in the picture, it was showing pom-poms. Um, we're gonna be using cotton balls today just because that's what I have at home. So, it, but it still has a similar shape. So we're noticing our really high area of land up here, and then we still have our high land around it, and our plate would be kind of considered like our lower land. So today we're gonna to be focusing on looking at how erosion can cause a big change over time. So before we go ahead and actually use the model, I want you guys to think about what do you think would happen to the mountain as water hits? Because when it rains in the mountains, it is actually creating streams that are going down our mountain. So it's a stream that's flowing down the mountain constantly. So what do you think are some things that might be happening to the mountain as it's raining out? You guys can go ahead and pause this video and answer the question in your packet, talk to somebody at home, or just think about it in your head really quickly. So when I'm thinking about rain, um, and I remember this from our land uh, or our handbook of land and water, I'm remembering that rain can cause erosion, and erosion is when tiny bits of rock come off, which is over time going to change the shape of our landform. So we are going to be thinking about our mountain model using cotton balls. So each cotton ball that we have shows a piece of rock, a tiny, tiny piece of rock. And every single time that I take a cotton ball off of our model, that's representing 50 years. So this teeny, tiny piece of rock, it would take 50 years of rain streaming down the mountain to actually cause it to erode or for a tiny piece of rock to come off. And once that rock does come off, that is going to be carried somewhere else. So maybe this tiny piece of rock is going down a stream when it's raining and will then flow into an ocean and become a piece of sand or will flow into a river and become a piece of sand. So it's not that this is totally disappearing, it's just going elsewhere. So when we look at our mountain model, if I take one piece of one cotton ball away or one tiny piece of rock, um, are we noticing a change? So when I look at it, I wouldn't be able to notice a change right away just from taking that one piece off. So then we need to think about, would we need to change our model map that we made? So just based off of taking that one tiny piece off, I don't think I would need to change my map because my shape still looks the same as it did before, even though it's just one small piece that came off. So now what I want you guys to do is I want you to close your eyes and then I'm going to have you open them after and we're gonna see if we notice a change with our model. So go ahead and close your eyes and do not open them until I tell you. Okay, so go ahead and open your eyes. So do we notice a change in our mountain now? So again, if I am just looking at it, I'm not noticing a huge change. I still see this area of very high land up here, and then we still have our area of high land, so I don't immediately notice a change. Um, but I did actually take one more cotton ball away. So um, why do you think it's so difficult to tell if I removed anything from our mountain model? So I want you guys to just take a second to think about that. Why is it hard to tell that something's changing even when I'm taking things away? So when I'm thinking about it, first thing I'm thinking is that these cotton balls, remember, represent tiny pieces of rock. So if we're thinking about tiny pieces of rock coming off of a really large mountain, we're probably not going to notice a huge change in our landform. Another thing to remember is that every single time one of these comes off, it is representing 50 years before this actually changes. So over 50 years, one of these pieces might fall away. So it takes a really, really long time for all of these cotton balls to eventually erode or fall off. So it's taking a lot of time. And also, these are really, really small pieces that come off. Okay, so I will see you guys back on our next video to continue talking about our mountain model. Hi guys, all right, so we are on the last activity for lesson 3.2. Um, so we were just looking at our mountain model from before. Um, which was showing the cotton balls coming off of our mountain, representing tiny pieces of rock coming off over time. So we were just talking about why it is so hard to tell whether I removed a pom-pom or not. And it is because in a huge, huge, huge mountain, if we're taking just one tiny pom-pom off, 
you're not really going to notice a huge change. Because again, just like with a mountain, we would not notice one tiny piece of rock eroding off of the mountain. Um, we also know that this takes a really long period of time because just like in our um, investigation video, we know that as we take one pom-pom off, that's representing 50 years of rain eroding that bit of rock off. So another thing we're focusing on is if we need to change our maps. And based off of just taking two pom-poms off of our mountain model, we would not need to go back and revise our maps because it's not that big of a change to where anybody would notice just from looking at it, which means we would not need to change our map yet. So how can we explain what happened over a long period of time so that now we are able to see these changes? So we might not be able to notice a tiny piece of rock coming off every few days. But after a long period of time and lots of little bits of rock have eroded or fallen off of the mountain due to rain, we will eventually be able to see a change in the shape of our mountain. But again, this will take a lot of time because as we take a pom-pom off, that's 50 years. So if you're thinking about all the pom-poms that we have on this plate, that is a lot of years of bits of rock or pom-poms being taken off of our mountain in order to see a really big change. So again, we would notice a change, but it would take a really long time. So you will notice that in your packet, there is a second worksheet that looks very similar to the one that we filled out at the very beginning of this lesson. So you guys are gonna color in the map key, same colors as the first worksheet that you worked on, and then you are gonna draw a new map to show how small changes can add up to a big change over time. So in this, box right here, I want you to draw a picture of what you think the mountain would look like after maybe thousands and thousands of years of bits of rock eroding off. So you can go ahead and pause this video and work on completing this worksheet and then when you are all done you can come back to the video to finish up this lesson. Okay, so we're thinking about how the mountain model is similar to the real world and how it is different. So before I go ahead and talk about that, I want you guys to pause the video and write down any similarities and differences that you see between our mountain model and a real mountain in your packet. If you do not have a packet, you can talk to somebody at home or just think about it in your head really quick. Some things that I'm thinking are similar between our model and a real mountain is that um, the shapes are pretty similar. So just like in this picture, that's kind of like a real mountain where you're going to have a higher peak and then kind of a higher, more elevated area going down to a lowland area. Another thing that's similar is the idea of each pom-pom or cotton ball representing a small piece of rock because in this mountain, if we're taking one pom-pom off, it's not going to cause a huge change or not something that you would no notice from looking. Um, and that's the same with the mountain. As a tiny piece of rock comes off, we're not necessarily going to notice it when we're looking at the mountain. Some differences that I'm noticing between the two is that obviously our model is made out of soft cotton balls, whereas a mountain is much harder because it's made out of rock. Um, another difference that I'm thinking of is that we're using our hands to take the pom-poms off of our models, whereas when erosion happens on a mountain, it's normally caused by something else, like maybe weather, but it, it would not happen just from somebody, you know, taking a tiny rock off of a mountain and throwing it. Okay, so we're moving on to our very last part of the lesson, which is considering scale in the mountain maps. Geologists use the word scale when they are discussing how big or small something is. Our idea about what could be observed on our map has to do with scale. We did not draw new maps after the first small change, and we only drew new maps once the change was on a large enough scale to be observed. And you guys um, were doing that based off of what you think it would look like if we took a lot of the pom-poms off of our model. So what kind of scientists might think about scale in their work? So there are lots of different scientists that will have to think about this. And remember, scale is taking something bigger and trying to think about a way to show it on a smaller in a smaller way. So when I'm thinking about this, I might think about plant scientists might have to do this, um, space scientists might have to do this, uh, maybe scientists that are looking at fossils are people that will have to think about scale when they're doing their work. 
So I want you to think about one of the scientists that I just talk about, talked about, plant scientist, space, fossils, or if you have a different one in mind, you can do that one. And I want you to think of some things that this scientist might need to study at a very small scale and some things that they might need to study at a very large scale. When I'm thinking about small scale and space, we're thinking about if they're studying something about a planet, they're not going to be able to take an entire planet and bring it here to look at it. So they're going to need to look at that on a smaller scale. Whereas if we're thinking about fossils, some fossils are really, really small, and they might need to think about it on a bigger scale to better investigate about it. So in our next lesson, we're going to build on our understanding of scale to also include how fast or slow something can happen. So I will see you guys for lesson three for chapter three. Have an awesome rest of your day. Thank you.